Okay. Uh, my proofreader actually told me that this was one of the better reviews I did. This is Ulrich, Ulrich B. Phillips, American Negro Slavery, a survey of the supply, employment, and control of Negro labor as determined by the plantation regime. The foreword in this was done by Genovese, a historian that actually supported Philip's work. And Genovese did a In 1966, he did a foreword for the reprint of Phillips' work. And the problem is, uh, the reason why this is significant is because Phillips' work had fallen into obscurity because the man was just flat out racist. Even his supporter, Genovese, could not get around that. And... You know, he just like, okay, he's racist, but the dude is really, really smart. You got to kind of check this out. And to be honest, if you think about it, because Phillips wrote this book in 1918. This book was published in 1918 anyway. And he had fallen into com just about complete obscurity until um, Genovese, you know, really began to refashion his work, recirculate his work, and to put up good arguments against the detractors of Phillips. If you notice, Genovese's rebirth of this work was in 1966. So in 1963, we had Medgar Evers assassinated and Kennedy assassinated. 65, we had... Malcolm X, and in 68, we had King and Kennedy, Robert Kennedy. So right in the middle of that, which is probably the greatest height of white supremacy in the United States since chattel slavery, that's when this rebirth and re-respect of a known racist came about. And again, to make no qualms, this is not me saying that this man is a known racist. This is the person who is in support of his work bringing that about. But what he does say, which is relatively logical, that if one thing somebody says is wrong, does that make everything that person says wrong? And he's pointing out as scholars, you know, we have to be careful of dismissing everything somebody says because this man has a lot of good things to say. It just he blinds his he's blinded in certain areas that he's willing to point out and that makes his work seem deficient. But to actually get into the to the book itself, it is. Well, I can say it. This is this is this is my channel. This is my video. It's almost laughable. This is cognitive dissonance at its worst. Uh, this particular he's known as a southern historian, particularly a plantation slavery historian. He's known for really using uh, a lot of primary sources that deal with large plantations. Now, one criticism of his is that slavery wasn't just on large plantations. So now we have a class and racial, <coughs> excuse me, and racial disparity. Because if you're on a big plantation, that means you got a lot of money. So is this really the problem is that he tries to use his work as representative of that time and experience of slavery. And that is representative of large plantation slavery, not necessarily slavery in and of itself. Genovese brought about a good point. Is there information or even a reason to think that slavery on a large plantation differed that much on a small farm? 
We don't know that, so we really can't out and out reject what he's saying, meaning Phillips. But we can't also out and out accept what he's saying because we don't have that information. But on these plantations, he felt, meaning Phillips, felt that slavery was not an economic powerhouse that it had actually made the, fall, the South fall behind the North because the North was going so strong with the uh, Industrial Revolution and that he saw slavery more of, as a way of life, more of a status symbol type thing. And he didn't see uh, slavery as cruel. He saw slave masters as paternal and violence was only to teach and to guide and to sophisticate and to civilize the Negro. Now he made it clear that um, the Negro in his opinion was a sub, sub, subhuman species that we were lesser intelligent and all this but even he was back and forth because you go a little further and he would say the black man knew the white man better than the white man knew the black man or that there was never a time that black people wasn't on white people's mind and it definitely wasn't a time that white people wasn't on black people's mind and that the black people uh, influenced white people as much as white people influenced black people. At the same time, he said that slavery was just a, a, a school, a finishing school to sophisticate which is why slavery was going to end at some point. But nobody ever graduated from the school. Now, his detractors in that area were saying, well, there's really no reason to believe that slavery was going to end as long as the prices associated to the products of slavery, tobacco and cotton, were still doing well. Um. Uh, Phillips had um, was a excellent economist and if you look at the arguments it doesn't seem like he's lying. It, it's not like he's, because my original thought was just that, you know, white people were hateful and they, not, not all white people, let's get that clear. But these particular people that affected history in such a way that was so slanted that it, it had to be purposeful. I think that People do create rationales as to where something just too hard to accept, especially close to them, because his mother, his mother's family owned a large slave plantation and he knew the good in those people. So he's actually extracting that good and projecting it, I think, misguidedly on all plantation owners and that's very significant into the perspective and its sincerity. Last point. I think that Eugene Genovese, who was a Marxist historian, and Mar Marxist historians are, are really focused on class. They're just really class-based, which is why that whole um, large plantation, small plantation thing was brought out in, in, in the preface. But Class is generally connected to money, so economists, class, I see the two working together. I think he actually stole the book with his preface because he his defense of the detractors point by point in the preface made the book a little more digestible. Other than that, it seemed like joke after joke after joke 
and just so desensitized to the enslaved experience that it wasn't fun. But a book I definitely uh, suggest that you read if you get the opportunity to. Not a hard read and it is interesting. 